Hello, everybody. All right, today is, go up here to the top. Today is Wednesday, the 27th. And we started off math talking about input output tables today. So today, um, we've already talked about these in the past. And this was just a bit of a review from things that we've covered. And so let me move me. So now we're, we've made it to division. So now we have, um, we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We've got all these different um, ways that these tables can be set up. So we're on page 12. All right, so the first one here, it says look at the input output table. And again, we're trying to find either the missing inputs, outputs, um, and then the rules. So any of these things could be missing. So here we've got um, a table. And so you see the inputs here on the left, you see the outputs on the right, and they went ahead and they filled in this middle part for us. And they, the thing that's consistent is they're taking the input and they're dividing it by five. Taking the input, dividing it by five. Taking the input, dividing it by five. And that goes all the way through. And so what you see here is when you do 10 divided by five, that equals two. When you do 40 divided by five, that equals eight. And so here it's asking us for the 70th position. So we went ahead right here, here's my work. Uh, we went ahead, we took that input, we said the input is going to be 70. We did the rule divide by 5, and when we divided that out, that's where we got our 14 right there. On number 2, in the middle, here again we have our input, we have our output, and we have our rule. And here it's flipped, this time they're taking 12 and multiplying it by the input. So you see the 2 and the 2 the three and the three, the five and the five. And then here, let me make this, um, I didn't choose my answer. So here, um, we took, where's my work here? So here we took, um, it's asking about the 10th position. So we took that 12 times 10, multiplied it together and got 120. So here it was just asking us um, what the value would be if it was in the 10th position. So these are all positions. Um, and then we applied the time 12 rule and then we got that output. Over here, number three, here we have um, a little bit different because it's missing this middle piece here. So here we had to go find uh, what, the rule, um, what the rule to this is. And so here it says the table below shows the number of ounces that are equivalent to different numbers of pounds. So here you have your number of pounds and your number of ounces. And when we first started talking about this, um, we talked about how not everything is um, always going to be labeled as input output. Sometimes you'll have different titles like this one is pounds and ounces, but it's the same, you know, the same thing that you do on any of the tables. It's the same here. So we noticed that our numbers were going smaller and then we move to the right, they're getting bigger. So the only options for that is either to add, um, we could subtract, we can multiply and divide. Well, if your numbers are going from a small number to a big number, you are either adding or multiplying. So we said, okay, let's, let's go ahead and try that. So we said three plus 45, equals 48. Well, that's that's true for that one little um, part, but we have to check it on the second. 5 times 16, I mean 5 plus um, that 40, um, uh, 45, that does not equal 80. So we knew that it's not, um, it's not addition. So then we tried multiplication and we said 3 times something gives us that number. Well, we didn't know um, we didn't know that off the top of our head, so we went and we found a friendlier number. So if you look right here, um, this ten times six, this ten times sixteen is one hundred and sixty. That was um, that we could do. Um, that was an easier starting place. So we said um, right here in my work, um, ten times sixteen is is one hundred and sixty, um, and um, we checked it and that was true. And then we went and checked 
we took this one right here, 5 times 16 down below, and we checked it as well, and it was also true. And so we knew that times 16 was our, was our, um, was our rule. And so that's why, um, since we checked it twice, and it worked for both of those that it gave us all the way across, uh, we knew that that was, you know, what we, what, what our rule was. So then once we figure out just the basic, like how the table was set up, now we need to go and we need to see how many ounces are equivalent to 15 pounds. So we take um, the 15, we put it in the pounds. So um, right here, uh, 15, and we multiplied it by the 16, so down here, and that's what gave us the 240. So again, it's just finding those, um, those rules and then going and applying them. Next, on page 13, you guys are solving these independently. Um, problem two here and problem three look like the first page. Uh, C and D kind of look familiar with what we've done in the past. Um, the only difference with C and D compared to the other ones is these are, um, the input is on top and the output is on the bottom. So seven and 57 are a pair. 31 and 81 are a pair. You need to go look at those and find the rule, and then that'll help you go and find these missing pieces. Same thing over here. You're going from a 65 to a 34, an 87 to a 56. So find the pattern that works for both of those, find that rule, and then help. that'll help you find those missing um, pieces there. So go ahead, solve that, and then um, I want you to take a picture of your whiteboard, or your notebook or whatever it is that you have and um, show your work and record yourself how you solved it. All right, then uh, we worked with groups today where we were working with um, continuing decimals and fractions. And that was math today, so finished up on that. Um, tomorrow we will take our math um, CFA and AWARE and then um, we'll continue, we'll do a, a review with some division problems. Um, and then just a heads up, we are doing our test on Friday. So be, make sure you are um, prepared for that. Then, and I'm gonna actually, we already did this. So I'm gonna take this off. Cause we already did that. We did that a little bit early. All right, so then we went into reading, and today we um, continued looking at tall tales. We're identifying the characteristics of the story, or of, the, um, of tall tales by comparing two stories. So today we read about John Henry, and that is in your reading, which is here. All right, so we started on page eight and we went to um, nine here. So nine, we read the story about John Henry. And then um, the second story that you're going to compare um, is in this Tall Tales story, which is on Epic. And this story is in chapter three. So it's got several Tall Tales in it. You just need to flip through and find chapter three. And then um, you could also there's more information. There's a whole book here um, about John Henry where, um, where you could read this. And so the story of John Henry, he's, um, he's working and he, we, we took a minute to also talk about his character because that was um, one of the most missed on our CFA that we did. Um, almost, we, ha we had a, a really high percentage, but most of them were, um, the, if you missed it, it was on um, a character trait one. And so with these, with this story, you have John Henry and he's working on a, um, they're building railroads and he's got all these people that are, are working with them. And John Henry, he is super strong. He works as, as much as um, 10 other people. He is like a superhero among all these men. And so somebody comes and they bring this machine and they're like, oh, you know, this machine can do it for you. And he says, um, you know, people are worried that they're going to lose their job. And so John Henry says, well, if I can beat the machine, you know, everybody should be able to keep their job. And so he ends up beating the machine. 
So he, you know, he helps everybody to keep their job. And so we talked about, you know, what does that say about his character? Everybody else didn't have anything to do with him beating this machine. It was strictly him. And so when um, he mentioned everybody, that was a big kind of signal for, you know, who he is as a person. And, um, and that, um, you know, that really showed that he was a kind person looking out for others and, you know, cared about them too. And it also, um, what was I going to say? Um, I don't remember what I was going to say, but anyways, talking about his character and, um, you know, that that was a reflection of who he is. And afterwards, um, he ends up passing away because he had, he had pushed himself so hard. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I was going to say, um, you know, a lot of these stories, these, you know, exaggerated things that people add over the, over, over time, the reason they're added is because, you know, these are, these are concerns that actual people had. So people were worried, um, you know, about machines and things like that taking over their jobs. And so that's how these things, these little, you know, elements get into these stories is because those were actual concerns. So here's a story um, showing, um, you know, telling about a man who overcome, you know, overcame that and um, was, you know, was able to, um, to, to save everybody's job. So we talked about that, and then um, you guys are doing the comprehension questions and comparing the stories, and then so um, this was at the end here. We did a little exit ticket with these. Um, how did his story make people feel better? So again, about the jobs, and then um, we talked about we just talked about this too. Um, what does it say about his relationship with his um, fellow workers? So again showing that he, you know, was a caring person, um, with that. Then after that, we got into groups and we did the next, um, the next pieces of our book. And then, um, in writing today, we have, um, we did our conventions where we were talking about writing, um, with dialogue. Oh, no, not science. This one. Let me actually bring up mine. All right, so we've been talking about um, specific places of punctuation and um, going down, 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 down. All right, so here we talked about um, on page four, or let's see, on page, no, we started on 13. So on page 13, um, it says the end statements in the quote with, um, or in, for pattern two, when you have this dialogue tag at the end, you need to end your statements in the quote with a comma. The period goes after the speaker. So comma, 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 after everything's being said, we end it with a period. When we have a question and we're asking a question, you say what's being said, you put your question mark, and then you say who is speaking, then you put the period at the end. There's no longer a comma. This question mark is signaling to our reader, we're asking a question, so we need a um, question mark. Same thing here, we're screaming it. We want to tell the reader, um, you know, with this symbol here, this signals that this is a, you know, she's not just saying, oh, stop. It's stop. She's screaming it. So we need that explanation point or um, explanation mark there, and then the period goes at the end. So state, when you're making a statement, comma, and period at the end, asking a question, question mark, period at the end, screaming, yelling, overly, you know, excited type remark here, um, explanation point, period at the end. Then here we practice with that, and that's where we left off. And we went over to our composition and um, today we were starting to work on the body. So we are looking at um, we are looking at some writing 
and we are, um, you know, it's it's good to look at examples of, um, you know, well written writings because then, um, you know, we we learn ideas and and see different styles that we can take and we can use into our own writing. And so um, we started off with our introduction. So I had said, what is my, what is my favorite place? You asked, that's easy. My grandparents' lake house. You can ride motorcycles, play in the dirt and collect petrified wood. To most people, it's just a plain old lake house. For me, it is the opposite. Then we came over here and we started doing some um, thinking about our place. So I said, here's my grandparents' lake house. I wrote down the three things and then I started doing it just a brain dump where I take everything that when I think about, you know, that dirt pile at my grandparents' lake house and I, it, I pop that, you know, front and center in my brain, everything that comes to mind, I'm jotting it down. I'm just getting out those memories. I'm making them, you know, I'm just making them come to life. And I'm really thinking about, okay, you know what, what was important? What memories do I have? Okay. I remember I was with my sisters and my cousins. I remember how smooth the sand felt once we, you know, had smoothed it all out. I remember it being real cool to the touch. Um, I remember, you know, making tunnels and having cars over the, you know, go through the tunnels and all this. And so all of those things that are coming to mind, I'm jotting them down, jotting them down, jotting them down. Same thing with the other two. And so I'm building, um, you know, that up. And then that helps me when I get over here and I actually start writing it, I can start adding in those pieces. So the body, if you go back to page one, the body is where we need to do the second part, where we explain what makes it special to us. And so here, um, I'm, I'm through describing these things. I'm, I'm saying what you know, what this place was to me. And, um, and so the first one I went with was riding the motorcycle. So this paragraph here is all about the motorcycle. The second one here, um, I'm talking about um, the the dirt pile, the, the sand, I, I changed, I ended up instead of dirt pile, I, I ended up, it was a sand, so I put sand pile. And so here, motorcycle rides, um, I, no, I did motorcycle here, sand here, and then petrified wood. So I started, um, you know, thinking about, and I had to have those thoughts in my head where, you know, at the beginning, I was like, okay, this is something I did in the front yard of their house. And then I moved to the backyard and then I said, okay, well, after you play in the sand, you're eventually going to have to run off, uh, rinse off. So, um, you know, you're going to have to go down to the lake and, and rinse the sand off you and stuff like that. And then my transition was, um, you know, before you come in, you'll want to look around because you can find all these different treasures. And then that's when I started bringing up about the petrified wood. So your, your main mission here is you really want the, the reader, the person that's reading this to really, um, like they should feel like they're a part of this place that you're describing. Okay. When I say, um, you know, when I say holding on to my granddad, we're zipping down the empty roads. It's if we're flying, the wind blowing on our faces, the oversized helmet, the feeling of exhilaration and fear. Um, you know, I'm, I'm painting a picture. And so with your words, you can use specific words to really describe and be very, very descriptive so that your reader knows, okay, you know, this is what, this is what she's talking about. And, um, you really want them to connect with your story. Okay. Using things, um, you know, using things like, oh, this is my favorite place because it's fun and I get to go with my family and I get to ride rides and we have so much fun and it's not boring and I can't wait to go again. Like it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's basic. You want to use more descriptive language. What does it feel like? Like if you're talking about a, you know, a roller coaster or a theme park or something like that, like what, is, what does it feel like? What does it feel like when you're at the very top of the super top of the highest point of the roller coaster, what does it feel like when you slowly start to dip down and you're looking down and you've got just nothing but, you know, ground down below you? Like, what does it feel like inside? Like you're rushed with, you know, like these feelings, like tell it to your reader, 
describe to them what it's like and they'll really be able to connect more with your story. And so, you know, or if you're at the beach, your happy place is the beach. What does it feel like to take your shoes off and to run across the sand and the sand's in your feet and you, you got to hurry up and you got to dive into the water because the sand was so hot from your feet burning. You know, what does that feel like? What do you see? What do you hear? Um, think about all those senses and really put that into your writing. And again, it's just ways that you can connect with your reader. Okay, You want them to not be bored. You want them to feel like, you know, that's that's, you know, they, they're going to understand why this is your favorite place after they read your paper. All right. So I wanted everybody to hit the green check. And I see that I have lots of notifications, so thank you. Um, I wanted everybody to send me their papers so I could look them over and kind of see where we're at and see if we need to adjust anything um, before we go into tomorrow. And then uh, for science today, um, we went over these, but we first did a little going backwards to Tuesday science. And we reviewed about um, shadows, and then we got into our actual um, lesson. So where was I? Here. All right, so here we started just looking at some photos of different seasons, and we started talking about, um, you know, what's your evidence for what you see? And so we went through these, and students were calling out, you know, what they what they saw, you know, oh, I see kids wearing shorts and they're playing outside and everything's real green. So, you know, I'm, I'm claiming that that must be um, summertime and my, you know, all those things I said is my evidence versus this one. The trees are bare. Um, it looks like wintertime because I don't see any leaves on the trees and they're kind of um, looking like they have maybe some white. I don't know if that's snow or what that is. Um, and then so on. So we looked at those, and that's on the link here. You can just click that, and then um, we watched um, we watched a a little short video. You can click this here. Just make sure you're into your launch pad. Um, but we really just got started talking about why we have seasons, and um, you know what the cause of them is. And so that was a conversation we had. And a lot of people have a lot of background knowledge already about seasons, and um, you know the tilt and all that. So that's great. Um, to, to mar not tomorrow, um, Friday, we will start talking about it more. And, um, and so, um, we will make sure you have for Friday, um, you need your orange, your, either your little skewer or, um, toothpick. You need two toothpicks if you don't have one of these and you need a black Sharpie and you need a flashlight. So we're going to look, we're going to put this um, through our orange, and we're going to talk more specific. So um, you guys, like I said, you guys already know quite a bit, which is great. So we're going to build on that and take that knowledge to the next level. And then um, for social studies, uh, we watched this first video. You guys can watch the, um, the other two on your own. But we started talking about culture and um, just what culture means and how we got all of these different cultures um, into Texas. And so um, this one here is about a couple people um, with Mexican heritage, um, a couple people that are African Americans that um, they, you know, they, the, you know, the the minute was talking about um, struggling um, because of the color of their skin. Um, you know, they, they did have a lot of struggles and a lot of hard times, but we were talking about, you know, celebrating culture and celebrating our differences. And, um, then we went to here and the independent work was the, um, social studies assignment for Wednesday. And then, um, at intervention time, there was some more time given for writing and that was about it. So we, 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 we up here tomorrow again, we're going to, oh, excuse me, we're going to take the little short CFA um, for math. Um, tomorrow is when tutorials got moved. It's a um, math week and then Friday division. So I think that is 
it. Let me make sure. Make sure you've read your story. Um, and recorded that. And that's about it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow. Bye.